The map's the size of an Oreo. Itty bitty. Like, genuinely. If we're counting my webcam, the health bar would be my arm, where it is now the green of my hoodie. <laughs> That's insane. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hey Show podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Ethan, joining me, as always, are my good friends, Kyle. Hello. And Hunter, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just as well. We feeling good? We feeling refreshed after what has probably been in the past couple of days? Uh, well, the past couple of weeks, should I say? A bit, of, you know, a bit of a refresher of what's happened. We've been playing some video games finally. How's it been going? Yeah. yeah. It's been a nice little, Indeed. nice little quiet period. It has, but you know, Hunter's cut, getting through his backlog. Through that backlog. Yeah, Hunter's yeah. getting through it. He's got through Red Dead, and now he's in Elden Ring territory. He's going through all that. Yeah, once I get through these big ones here it's just other like medium to small stuff left hell yeah uh so this week we're gonna kind of do a bit of a catch-up because it's been a couple of weeks and there's been some game releases uh elden ring's dlc came out uh final fantasy 14's expansion came out the concord oh, uh, early access beta was <laughs> out and me and cal played that so um we're just gonna it was free that's why free. we played it we didn't pre-order concord but um yeah so i thought it'd be cool we did we it just, for uh, content we just gonna sit we're just gonna sit down we're gonna talk about all of these little impressions we'll see how far we get uh how long how long we can talk for this uh, uh, i can't even speak you know it's gonna be a good one but um yeah we'll see how well how long goes. can we talk for how long can we two talk min- for? two and a half minutes at least two and a half minutes <laughs> maybe i'll just catch my voice back up real quick it's all fine but uh yeah Welcome back, everybody, to the Show Podcast. We're here every Monday around 12 p.m. UK time. 5 p.m. Wrong way around. I am done. I'm dead. I can't do this podcast <laughs> anymore. It's just over. 5 p.m. UK Washed. time, 12 p.m. Eastern. Podcast Washed. services everywhere. YouTube.com forward slash hard gamers only. Bloody blah, blah, blah. blah. Hoopity doopity doo. I cannot speak anymore, apparently. Shall we just dive straight into it? There's no housekeeping, really, this week. Shall we just dive straight into uh, it? Yeah, let's go. Hell Let's yeah, what are we starting with? Are we starting with Elden Ring? Are we starting with Final Fantasy? Or are we starting with Concord? I know there's one of those that I would definitely leave till last, but, you know, <laughs> what are we starting with? Well, I put FF14 at the top of... Of the top of the Of course he did. See this, Hunter? Stamps. Look at this. I give him... I, I give you done the time stamp? He's like, yeah, let me talk about I mean, <laughs> my addiction real to... quick. It's more recent than Elden Ring, and I think more people yeah. are interested uh, I would in, like to say, Concord. I have been playing Shadow of the Earth Tree. This is first impressions for Shadow of the Earth Tree Hunter as well, so uh, shit your know, ass down. I know, I'm just saying me, that it's still mm, more actually, recent than... Mm, actually, Earth Tree's educate. been out for like two or three weeks by now. Yeah, no, dude, you, you forgot, before. dude, this is Ethan's show. He's got to go first. My show. Well, Elden no, let's no, do no, it, dude. Let's no, do it, dude. Elden Ring. Talk to him, Ethan. Tell the people. No, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> Ethan hates talking. He can't do a very good job of that at the moment. Please, Kyle, continue. It's so um, true. So, yeah, um, FF14's newest expansion came out a few weeks back. This is Dawn Trail. This is their sixth expansion for A Realm Reborn. Jeez. And the first one that I have gotten to be a part of over the last, I'd say, probably year and a half, I've been going through FF14, and I managed to get caught up just in literally the nick of time right before the the update Next for match. yeah for 7.0 rolled around, rolled around so very exciting for me this is like i said first time i got to be a part of something like this did not get the full end walker experience with queue times cuz they seem to have fixed that fixed any of those issues fair enough but How i got to say like <laughs> I so first I'm not really too sure why I wasn't really following the discourse around it too deeply but from what I've gathered the community's kind of like 50-50 on whether or not they liked the the content of Dawn Trail. Mm-hmm. I personally enjoyed it. I think it's very solid. Um Coming off of Endwalker, this is like a much lower stakes story. It's not like it's not like big end of the world shit like that or anything. It's just something that's a lot more down to earth, a lot like I said, a lot lower stakes and a lot more like personal to the characters involved. 
That's probably why people would be split on it. Some people yeah. don't like when things can't be. It, I mean, that know, happens a lot, though. 800, in... the whole time. <laughs> you but, have your big expansions, you have your small Here's the thing, ones, Hunter. Yeah. Endwalker ended with you killing mo- uh, the big bad on the fucking moon. Yeah. Where do you go from there? You can't yeah. go much higher than that. I'm not saying that the people who would be upset that this is a more laid back kind of stakes are being mm-hmm. reasonable. I'm just saying right. that people are like that. And this is yeah. why there are 800 levels of Super Saiyan that don't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, them, you, I mean, you, have the, you have the weak expansions, though. This isn't news yeah. to anybody. Like, you know, Destiny yeah, has that ebb and flow the all the happens. time where they have one good expansion and then two shit ones back to back and then there's another good one. You can only do the high stakes so many times, right? You've got to build it up. You've got to level right. it up. You've got, you can only have those big events every couple of expansions. WoW's been doing it for years. WoW are the champions of having pandas show up and then the end of the world, you know? Like, not every... Yeah. You've got to have a panda every once in a while. You've got to have a panda. <laughs> I think people liked the panda more than the next couple, actually. I loved the pandas. The The pandas were... I was still... <laughs> I was in my Minecraft phase. I was playing a lot of PC games. I was like, this is this could have been... I was like, I don't know how old I was when Mr. Pandoria came up. I was like, this could have been the one. This could have been the one. If I was going to get into WoW, it would have been for the pandas, bro. <laughs> it would have been for the pandas. Dodged. Yeah. Dodged a bullet. For better or worse, he dodged it. Exactly. Just think about it, audience. There's an alternate timeline where Ethan is a huge World of Warcraft player. I played it for about 20 minutes and went, this is boring, thank you. There is an alternate timeline where Ethan has an attention span to play World of Warcraft. Hey, I had it back in the day. I chopped trees in RuneScape for years. Think about that. We're fine. But alas, (laughs) it got away. But Mm. now, Dawn Trail. What would you say yeah. are the highs of Dawn Trail, Danko? What, what, what are the highs? The highs for me really come with a lot of the the character you're following, the focal point character, Wook Lamott. She's this, basically this giant cat lady warrior. And her whole story is essentially trying to prove herself that she is fit to become the newest leader of the tribe once her once her surrogate father passes on and i like i'm just a huge fan of stories like that of just characters having to prove themselves be like yes i'm i am fit to do this this is going to be my my ultimate goal yeah i really liked her story and but like i said i think for a lot of people it'll be hit or miss whether that works for you or not the first the the expansion is basically split into two two halves. The first half is Wuklamot proving herself, all that, and the second half is her kind of stepping into that leadership role, where the second half also moves away from the first sort of continent. And when we move into Final Fantasy Nine, oh really? Yeah, you're basically getting into this new sort of Alexandria take on. The Kingdom of Alexandria. Oh, that's fun. There's a place in there also called uh, Solution Nine, which is a one of Zidane's limit breaks in FF Nine. So that's a that's a cute little reference. But a lot of a lot of the second half is you working with the new Queen of Alexandria. Her name is Sphine. And I'm not going to get too deep into that because that's more towards the end of the expansion, but I I really enjoyed seeing all the set pieces and how it all comes together. Fair enough. Uh I don't and know. as for like as Did for like know? other other stuff that they added into this expansion, they gave us a couple more jobs. Um both both um is Pirates one? It sounded like Pirates was going to be one. Um Pirates is not one. And that's but why we I'm do never have into it. Garbage, garbage video game. <laughs> we do have a sick dual sword class now. Oh, and we also fun. got we also got Pictomancer, like the girl like with the realm? paintbrush from yeah 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 okay. from FF six. Yeah, um, both jobs are pretty neat. I'm interested in both of them more so in the Viper class, the dual sword class, because. <laughs> that's what makes my brain happy 
swinging two swords is very them cool. Six expansions to get to a double <laughs> sword class. I don't know, dude. We had we had ninjas to keep us busy. I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, Pictomancer is a new magic DPS class. Revolves around you. Basically, there are these three portraits you draw, and then you get special moves based on them. It's it's an interesting class, but it's not really my my style. When I play a magic class, I prefer stuff like Red Mage, who doesn't have to rely on casting. Get to swing a sword too. Um, Viper Viper's pretty neat. It's very similar to something like Zidane from Final Fantasy IX. It's very inspired. It's a dual sword class when and they can also like put the swords together and get like a cool, a sick Darth Maul blade. Oh, like a nice. twin blade, yeah. This game functions on the rule of cool and <laughs> <laughs> can't say it doesn't work but yeah i'm a big fan big fan of everything that they've shown off so far um i have i have finished the expansion so now i'm in the in the waiting phase oh man for the post dawn trail content leading into the next expansion god this is the thing Kyle this is the, it's the train dude it's the train i can't now that He's done with the Infinity content game. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> is there enough to keep you engaged? That's the thing, right? Is like, I feel there like... There was. Yeah, but no. But I mean, like, now. Because the thing is, is... No offense to you, Kyle, but there's been a lot of players of Final Fantasy XIV that do have been playing since the beginning, right? So they get their little expansion fix, but they keep playing. Do you think that the minutia, the day-to-day, -day, is do you think there's enough to do to keep you engaged, or do you think that now that you have finished your monumental task of doing all of the main content for Final Fantasy XIV, are you going to take a step back and just come back when there's new content? Like, what is your game plan for Final Fantasy XIV now? I mean, I think for me, it's probably going to be something that my want to play the game is going to come in waves. Because, mm. like... I mean, I've got my character. She's already specked out for whatever the next bit of content is. You know, my the main class I've been using is level 100, which is the level cap that I got that, you know, you get that just from playing the main story. So, like, I'm all ready to roll whenever the next expansion stuff rolls out. So I'm not worried about, like, needing to catch up. Like, I was, like, catching up on 10 years of content in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I treat it, it's, it's similar to, like, how I play fighting games, you know? Sometimes I'll just take, like, two, three weeks away from it, because it's just not what I'm in the mood for. Hell, there were times in this year and a half catch-up where I'm like, you know, two week break, two week break away from Final Fantasy XIV. I'm, I'm not in the mood for it right now. I'll come back to you when I'm good and ready. I'll come back to you when I'm done being bullied by Crash Bandicoot 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, would you recommend it? Both that the, is, the, both that the, is a the very expansion unique itself question. and the absolute pain and torment of the whatever, however many hundreds of hours that you've put into Final Fantasy XIV to get to this point. See, here's the thing, though. Like, you can buy, like, expansion skips. So like, yeah, but, like, talk, like, like talk to talk to any Final Fantasy fourteen fan, and they will tell you that A Realm Reborn, the very first, the first story in this game, is the worst part of the video game. And you I'm like, would hope that it gets better after that. Well, yeah, yeah, because after that, yeah, yeah, after that you've got that. Heaven's Ward. Yeah, yeah. you want to. That's the <laughs> thing, though. That. What a dumb statement. You want that. <laughs> Why would you fuck yeah. off? You know what, mate? Yeah, I want my game to be good in the first part and then just fucking take a plummet, dude, for the rest <laughs> of the time. Like, yeah, that's well, a dude, good when thing. A Realm Reborn, when A Realm Reborn came out, we didn't have anything to compare it to. If we didn't game, know that'd be the lowest. If base game's the lowest, then that's a good game. Well done, you made a good MMO right yeah. there. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a dumb fucking... But also, I think it's dumb. If you're gonna play it, play it. Don't just, like... Yeah. I did. I did not buy any story skips i played straight the whole way through my ps5 timer says like 900 hours so do with that whatever you will that's more time than i've put on any video game on my playstation ever by the way just so we're aware determine so wait, you can determine for yourself if that is an accurate clock or not 
I don't know how accurate PlayStation's internal clock is. It isn't, but um, also I know that I think, yeah, if I remember correctly, I think PlayStation has my Black Ops 3 time, which is my most played Call of Duty because of zombies at like 860 something. So it's like, that's impressive, Kyle. You've beaten like 18 year old Ethan (laughs) in Call of Duty zombies time. That's impressive. Congratulations. Unfortunately, they don't go as far back as the PS3. So I don't know what my collective time on Dragon Age Origins is. But mm-hmm. that would be the closest one because Inquisition, which I only played like three or four times, has five hundred hours. Yeah, and I played Dragon Age Origins like a dozen times. So <laughs> I don't know. I think it's funny yeah. though. It's like you, you you always have the weirdest games. It's like people always clown on me when they go and check my profile out and they see I have four hundred and eighty odd hours in Crash Team Racing Nitro fueled. So it's like there you go. You know, you don't, <laughs> or like I don't on my Switch, six hundred some hours on tetris jack was bullying me or something jack was bullying me he was like he was looking at my switch profile and he's like really you've only got a 100 hours in breath of the wild i'm like yeah and that's like my second most takes to play the game that's my second most played game on switch that's my second most played game on switch xenoblade 3 is my most played and that's because it has an expansion that was another game in it like like, come on (laughs) yeah i'm not really sure what he's trying to get at besides that you didn't i think it's because you know you go to people and they're like i've got a thousand hours in smash ultimate i've got 500 hours in mario kart and it's like despite the fact that good for you like it I play a lot of games. I just don't play them. I I play them for a good yeah, time, not a long time. Like, yeah, there you go. I, I get play my them fail and I w- w- once away. and then again some years later, probably. Yeah. And then you know I don't. Sony Five would be in a running jumping. if they didn't re-release it every five times. So now I've like yeah, yeah that'd be like <laughs> yeah, that'd be like you know maybe two hundred and fifty between the two playthroughs I did. I think I'd be on three hundred odd. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But now, I'm glad that you're my done. T- my, time glad in, you're happy. my time in Guilty Gear Strive got reset because I switched from PS4 version to PS5, so I don't know what my total time is anymore. Yeah, you have to count them up now. It's like my Overwatch. Yeah. Where it's like, I, on the PS4 version, I have like 700 hours. I have another 100 mm. now on the PS5 native version, so it's like, there you go. You just got to add it up. Mm. But I'm glad that you've enjoyed yourself. I'm glad that your yeah. journey is over like, and onto new FF14. horizons. FF14. FF14 is so, so interesting to me because like I kind of just started playing it on a whim Mm. and, you know, starting out in a realm reborn, I'm like, I'm not really sure if this is for me. You know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I don't know if I'm playing an MMO correctly. 14, like you can play a lot of FF14, just like a single player video game. There are very few times where the game will have to will force you to be like, okay, you need to group up with another party with other players to do this. And even still, usually that's just for like side optional content. So yeah, it, I think that if you have ever been on the fence of wanting to play an MMO, definitely give it a shot. The there is a free trial. Obviously, not here to show that, but it is. There is a free version you can try. It is free to play through level 70. That gets you through the oh, first yeah. three expansions. They have with the release of Dawn Trail, they did expand it. So you have a Realm Reborn, Heaven's Ward, and Stormblood. So mm. you ha- you have like a lot of content and you get a lot of stuff on the free version. You don't get limited that much, truthfully. Like you you you'll just won't have access to stuff like retainers or the market board to buy things from other yeah. players. And um, just something because I looked into this because I don't remember I was looking into it because I oh I remember because I saw on Steam that like the starter pack was like one of the top selling things. I was like, what the fuck is a starter pack? I thought the whole first third <laughs> of this video game's free. And yeah, there is a starter pack. Don't buy the starter pack because it then invalidates the free trial thing and you get nothing of benefit. <laughs> so for the love of God. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> Don't do it, because then you have to stop paying cool. the membership. If you buy the starter pack, you have to stop paying for the membership. So, don't do that. Don't give them that 10 bucks. Get your money's worth. <laughs> My God. Or um, you're not money's worth. Yeah, you're not money's worth. <laughs> well, it's your Save choice. Your you money. can either play, yeah, play, it, play it all for free, or get those retainers and start paying $10 a month or whatever it is. Your choice, guys. Your choice. I know what I would do. 
Well, I would do no. I'd do neither because I I'm not an MMO yeah. guy. But you know, <laughs> if I was in that position, I would go for the free route. But that's just me. Because I mean, um, yeah, I I think if I'm remembering myself correctly, I think I went through all of a Realm Reborn on the free trial, and then by the time I got to Heaven's Ward, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm sold on this video game, and then bought my membership. Well, there you go. But no, like I. Obviously, like, 900 hours in it. I cannot recommend it enough. It's very, very good. Like, you'll see people hype this game up online, and I can say it is for good reason. It's very worth your time, especially if you're... if you are a Final Fantasy fan. Hell yeah. Cool. Let me go, then. Shall we move on? Yeah. Let's let's talk about Elden Ring, a game that has definitely never caused a controversy on this channel ever. <laughs> As if you're new to the podcast, welcome on in. If you're old to the podcast, you'll all know. Huge fans of Elden Ring, massive fans of Elden Ring. Number one Elden Ring podcast in terms of support and love and praise for Elden Ring. Um, so we've got two sections to this. The first section, I'll do some quick first impressions of the DLC so that we get that out of the way. We have got our contract fulfilled. We're all good to go. Second part is, is finally, after, you know, I played it year one, Kyle played it on the, like, Kyle played it during year two, and now Hunter is here during year three of Elder Ring. So we're finally, we can get Hunter's impressions of base game out. We're really milking this video game we that have. we love. Um, we have made an episode a year since it's come out. Basically <laughs> contained now, which is but, hysterical. So it's going to be a bit awkward. We're going to talk about we'll talk about the DLC first, then we'll talk about the base game because me, myself, and Kyle have replayed the base game as well uh, recently. So we'll have plenty of stuff to talk about. Have our opinions changed on Elden Ring? We'll find out soon. Um, but I guess let's talk about Shadow of the Earth Tree real quick. I've put about five and a half hours, I think, into Shadow of the Earth Tree so far, um, and. My main takeaway is oh well, my main takeaway is a uh, shadow of the air tree is more Elden Ring. Um, well, so, that's good, and I think it does a lot of things right. And I feel like here's the thing, right? I have always not been a fan of the get good crowd. I have always been of the opinion of even though I can very easily beat a from software game, it would not hurt to have accessibility options in it to make it so that more people can play these video games. Like um, a pause button, for example. Yeah. <laughs> God and, you know, imagine. I've been hearing the get good crowd. I've been hearing the complaints of Shadow of the Air Tree. And my honest to God opinion of Shadow of the Air Tree so far is the first boss is a bit of a steep learning curve in terms of DLC from software game, uh, when it comes to DLC and from soft games. But I don't think it's that bad. I genuinely think it, after I played the whole of the base game, I hopped into the DLC and I was like, this feels like a fight that is just slightly a step but like you know i've beaten all the bosses that there is to beat in elden ring this seems mm -hmm. like the next challenge it feels like a gradual thing um would you say it's harder or like how would you compare it to the final boss of elden it's, ring? it's definitely harder than the final boss of elden ring this game expects yeah, you to I have beaten the, foul, be. the final boss of elden ring before even going i would go so far as to say like... i think it expects you to have beaten melania before you play this mm -hmm. dlc I think that's in Bloodborne, that's a given. for example. <clears throat> all of the DLC bosses were harder than the end game bosses in Bloodborne. Yeah, like, I, I came back from beating Koss, and I was dog walking the last like four bosses. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure if you beat this DLC and you go back and fight Melania, you're probably like, "Wow, this is a cakewalk in comparison to how I felt about it beforehand." <laughs> but I think when most of the challenge comes from this game is because the team at From they had a really difficult job of having this DLC and knowing that everybody will have anywhere from level 120 to 200 to 300 level characters, right? That are going to come mm -hmm. into this DLC. And they don't want it to just be a joke. They don't want you to come into this new area uh, and just dominate and be like, wow, this is piss easy because I grinded the big chicken for 60 years in the base game. Wow, I'm so good. <laughs> so what this game does is it basically goes... It doesn't matter if you're level 120 or level 300, you're going to be dog shit in this new area and you're going to have to find new things to get yourself up in levels. So what this game does is the there are these items that are found in the world called um, 
it looks like it's spelled like skadoo tree fragments which is like it looks like you know pronounced shadow shadow yeah it's it's supposed to be like i think it's supposed to be like old english or something like that yeah shadow um yeah but i think it's funny calling them skadoo fragments because it just makes me think of blue blue so i'm just like yeah skadoo fragments (laughs) we have blue skadooed into a new world and now we've got to pick up the fragments it's fine it works um so basically you have to find these fragments they boost your lev- they boost your basically your attack stats but only in this new shadow realm so if you go back to the old game you are back to the same level you are you cannot find these skadoo fragments and go and then want molly what melania because you're super like stupid broken for what the base <laughs> game expects of you right that's not how this mm-hmm. works and it fixes one of my main problems that i had with base game elden ring and my problem that i've always had with base game elden ring is I've got my big sword. I've got the thing I want. Why should I go and look in all these fucking caves? Why should I go and look around and see what there is to offer in the world? And now the game gives me an actual reason is your broker shit. Go and get some upgrade fragments. Go and see what's behind it. Because they're not just... There's a lot of them that are just, you know, look, here's a giant glowing thing in the sky. There's one right next to it. You know, similar to here's the golden trees. There's the seed. There you go. Here's the church. There's your um, your chalice there's that you can go to upgrade. Yeah. flask thing, yeah. The game lets you go, oh, I attacked a random enemy that was holding like a bucket on his head that was shining and I killed him. It dropped one. Cool. You go and you can find them in different areas. I'm like, oh, this is great. It gives me that moment of, I'm feeling really underleveled, let me go explore. And not just in the Mm -hmm. way of, I need souls, let me go find another boss for me to whack. It's like, oh, what is in that cave? Maybe there is a Skadoo tree fragment in there, a Skadoo fragment in there. Cool. There is. Or, oh, there isn't. That's pretty cool. I like it. It feels good. I also feel like the world just feels a lot more condensed. It's a lot smaller than the base game. I think people have been clowning on Miyazaki because he said it was as big as Limgrave, and it's bigger than Limgrave. And I'm like, yeah, but it feels more refined than than the base game open world as well. It feels like there's less... Like there's, it feels like it, instead of it feel like it, like it feels less cluttered. That's a perfect way way of describing it. Is it is just like there's a couple of things here and there. There's some caves. There's there's stuff for you to do. But it feels like there's always something there that you want to actually mess around with, right? Hunter, you'll know you've played the old hunters from Bloodborne, right? Is yeah, new weapon types. New like new weapon types are very much prominent in FromSoft DLCs, and it's no exception here. So you have that, again, you have your weapons, but there's new variants of these weapons, right? So it's like, you've got some that are completely new, that they're just new weapon types. And then you've got others, which are really fun, where, for example, you know, all the, all the weapons have, or you can, you can get Ashes of War, right? You can press the L2 button, you can do a stupid thing with it like you can do fanning mm-hmm. stupid moves you, move, ninja yeah. swords with do whatever you want can't remember what the name of them off the top of my head is but there's a new weapon type where that ability is you basically just throw your fucking weapon at them like you literally just throw <laughs> the weapon like so you you've, you've got fo- yes, you've, you've got a four hammer you can just fucking throw the four hammer and then get another hammer back like it just gives you the hammer oh, back and cool. you can just fucking throw it like you can just throw it like your Kratos having a great time with his axe. You go for it, you know. Um, and they've done their best to not just make this like, oh, it's a new axe. You can throw this axe, and there's like five different variants of it. No, it's like there's a sword version of it. There's an axe version. You know, there's multiple variants of the weapons that you already have. It's more like, oh, this is a new way of fighting with these weapons. And it's like, oh, that's sick. I really appreciate that. There's. There's a lot of new variety where, again, in my head, I'm not going, oh, I don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. It kind of brings some of that magic back. It brings some of that Elden Ring magic back. When I've just done my replay, I didn't do many of the caves or any of the dungeons because I knew where the shit that I wanted was and I just waved goodbye to the rest of it because I didn't care. Whereas now I'm like, oh, maybe there is a Skidoo fragment down there. And if there isn't, oh, cool, I've got a new weapon that I can throw for some reason or I can do some sick, nasty tricks with it. Um, I think the DLC is solid. It's more Elden Ring. If you liked Elden Ring, 
you're going to like this DLC. Um, is it difficult? Yes, it's difficult. But again, I lo I would love some accessibility features. Pause fucking button would be fantastic. A pause button is all I ask for. <laughs> but you know, again, you've got this kind of counterbalance where it's like, how overpowered do I want to be? Oh, I really am struggling with this boss. Let me go and see how many Skidoo fragments I can find. Get myself buffed up. Do way more damage than needed. Oh, I'm still not feeling it. Oh, there's summons in the game. You know, bring your Mimic tier out. Do whatever you want. Summon the gold ones if you feel so inclined. They still have those from the, the base game where, you, you know, there's the classic Dark Souls. Summon oh, the guy yeah, outside the, the gate. Walk on out with yeah. him. Yeah. There's still that level there where I'm like, okay. Yeah, is Rolana, who is the first boss that I thought, is she pretty hard? Yeah, she's pretty hard. But I also was like, I like this. It feels like a challenge. I'm having fun. I got that bit of dopamine rush when I did get that final hit. And I'm like, yes, get in. There we go. We feel good. I feel like it does a good enough job of letting you balance your own difficulty. I don't necessarily feel like the hate is so apparent but also i'm not at the end game we know that elden ring my main flaw with elden ring is it has a stupid uh difficulty curve where it just goes off the fucking root it goes out the roof yeah near the end of the game um maybe the dlc is similar maybe the last two fights in this game are foot this dlc is fucking dog shit i don't know haven't got there yet but from my first six hours of fighting i probably beaten like four or five bosses in that time uh one main boss that i could very clearly tell was blocking story progression and then four smaller bosses that are more akin to your repeat bosses that you found in Elden ring but it's fun not i'm having fun tree watchdog very <laughs> not yet maybe one day i'll find him but the world looks nice it's a very pretty area like with the the eerie ghostly gravestones all over the place and uh mm. the shadow uh, tree in the background just it's very picturesque it's very good looking um don't know how it runs on console because i've unfortunately become a pc heathen and it's running perfectly fine on my 4080 it's doing good um but i'm having fun I'm, i i like it i don't see the hate maybe i'll see the hate maybe we'll come back in a week or two and i'll be like yeah, I take it back, guys. That ending's <laughs> dog shit. Back. I see the point, yeah. But so far, so good. I'm having fun. It's more Elden Ring. Go play it if you feel so inclined. But it's $40. That's quite expensive for an expansion, I feel. I but, mean, if the expansion's basically just another game. I don't feel it's another game. Like, this is screaming to me like it's probably going to take me, like, 20 hours instead of 60. It's like another... Th it's like, it, fe it feels like... I think it feels like an expansion in the sense of what an expansion used to mean. It feels like if like DLC one and like you know Dark Souls for example Dark Souls 3 came with two DLCs. It feels like it's a that amount of content's worth. It's a DLC one and a DLC two. That's how much it feels like. Mm -hmm. Whether that's worth $40 to you or whether you need to wait for it to be on sale that's your kind of point of reference. I think it's enough. Also if you haven't bought the game, now you can get like Elden Ring and the expansion together for the same price that the game used to be. So, you know. Yeah. Like, surely <laughs> there will be sales that cut that package down if you don't have the game already anyway. But I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. There's some fun little gimmicks to it. I couldn't tell you what the fuck is happening in terms of story. I really couldn't. The game doesn't even like... Oh, it's probably thrown you somewhere in the past... To the, 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 the literally the dlc the starts is you happened. go to moog's yeah you go to moog's thing and instead of there being nothing there there's now just a there's a npc that stands outside that stands next to mikola's hand and just goes yo you should touch the hand bro and then you touch the hand and you're in the area and then that's it i'm like okay i'm killing things whatever uh <laughs> from stuff stories have never been my uh deep. cup of tea really i've just uh oh well, they are deep it's just you gotta read a load of text descriptions and all that jazz and i'm not yeah. about that uh unfortunately but I'm having fun. I'm killing dudes. I feel like the world feels like it is more interesting for me to explore. Um, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'd recommend it if you're a big Elden Ring nerd. And uh, as my friend, I have my my good friend Eamon is a big FromSoft nerd. Uh, he has said to me that if you are a hater of Elden Ring's boss design because it's kind of stinky compared to the older games, especially Bloodborne, Sekiro, and uh, Dark Souls Three, uh, they're cooking again. 
they feels like they're going <laughs> back in the right direction. So good news on that part. Anyway, Hunter, I've talked about the new. Do you want to talk about the old? How are you finding Elder Ring, buddy? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been fun to get back into. You know, every every day that I, you know, play the game, I'm still compelled to keep going in the same way that, like, Bloodborne had me excited to get back to play some more of it when I got home from work when I was playing that. I've been really enjoying it so far. How um, far are you in? Let's let's give that. Uh, I pretty much just finished the second zone, like the area of the lakes or whatever it's called. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I finished the main dungeon there. That's my favorite and... area. Is it? Yeah, it's cool. a pretty good good area. Yeah, I from a world that design one. perspective, that's my favorite area. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I like the Atlas Plateau world. as well. Like I like yeah. Limgrave's all right. I just don't like Kylid in the fucking frozen area. Yeah, but yeah, and I pretty much did everything else around it before I went to the academy and did all that. The academy totally. dungeon was pretty cool. It reminded me of like the Devil May Cry level designs as far as the set dressing and all that. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the boss fight there is a little stupid though. Wasn't a fan of hide and seek. <laughs> What do you mean? Just find the glowy one, whack. Find yeah, the glowy I know. One, whack. And find the glowy one, whack. Like it's just it's not annoying. Very, it's, it's annoying, and the run back. The run back is so bad. Yeah, the run back. I wouldn't know reason. on both of my playthroughs. I'd beat that boss first try, thankfully. So I don't. Yeah, know yeah. Blah blah. blah shut the yeah, fuck yeah. up. Skill issue. Skill on, issue. On the second, on the second phase, she hit me with a laser that I wasn't ready for. Oh damn. Um, yep. But uh, it wasn't that hard aside from that, but having to play hide and seek again was annoying it's very well designed hide and seek i guess you you (laughs) got the glow you got the glowy thing and they make and the song gets louder the closer you get to the one that's singing Mm -hmm. so they did if if they had to do it i guess they did it all right but they just shouldn't have done that part (laughs) (laughs) like it's better than the hemwick witch but i would prefer to not do a boss fight like that (laughs) you know just yeah. start with the lady casting her cool moon magic at the beginning. <laughs> but Dude, it... aside from that, it's been fun to explore, finding weapons and stuff, trying things out. It's been what's your build? What? How are you feeling on the build? Uh, twin blades has been what I've been rolling with. Mm-hmm. Pretty much what I found before I stopped playing when the game came out was a twin blade that I was enjoying, just the normal one there. And I picked the game back up, had that in the inventory, and was like, yeah, I like this. I found a way <laughs> to put blood on it. So that's what I rolled with. Now I found, before I went to the academy, I did the one, uh, what was it called? I don't know. I don't remember the area's name anymore, but it had like the magma drake right before the elevator to the plateau. Oh, yeah, you oh. did the cave, the entrance into the Atlas Plateau? Yeah, yeah, I did that Mm. one. And so I scooted off because I knew that there was another twin blade. It was like the red one that did bleed and fire stuff. So I went and got that and the really really long katana. (laughs) I'm not (laughs) using the long katana, but that's my bad. That's my main. I love the really long katana. That shit's great. Yeah, the Sephiroth (laughs) sword. It's great, but it gives that to you right before you fight the lady that had the twin blade that I'm using. So. That's doing that, and the twin blade I had before is now in my other hand as a frost inflicting weapon, so I can make people really cold and then make them explode with blood. (laughs) (laughs) Is what I've been rolling with, or what I settled into. So, yeah. It's interesting, right? Because it's like, Kyle, you you, you know, you just replayed it. It feels like. There is something great about that first playthrough of not knowing anything. Being like, wow, there's so much to do. Let me have a look at this, that, and the other. How are you feeling after a second playthrough, Kyle? Obviously, I joked earlier, but uh, my impression, my first impressions of Elden Ring back in 2022 were, it's all right. It's fine. Like, I wasn't vibing with it. Um, Mm -hmm. And Kyle, your opinion was slightly more positive, I think, than mine. It was. 
And having done this second playthrough, I think my opinion on it is a lot more solidified to where I'll say, like, I'm basically settled on, like, the first two-thirds of this video game is some of the best open-world gameplay I've experienced in in any video game I've played. But the last third of the game, when... That's where it all kind of starts to fall apart for me, because it kind of loses... Like, when I say last third, I'm talking, like, the mountains and onward. The giant mountains and onward. Um, that's about where the game starts to fall off for me personally, because I feel like it loses a lot of what I liked in the in the first two thirds, and instead it just opts to become a boss rush with a <laughs> with a pretty significant difficulty spike to it. It's interesting. I don't know if it was because my build was better than my first playthrough build, but. When I got to the ending this time, I was like, oh, not look for looking forward to this. And I don't know if it's just because my game sense is better. I have a better understanding of just every how everything works. But it's like, Fire Giant, I thankfully did. Like, first try this time. That was good. Godskin Duo, I had a bit of a hesitance with. it. I think it was took me like two or three with that one. But I was always hit and miss. on his first try, so... <laughs> Congratulations, but, I'm saying that on the show. I know you're listening. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Like, I almost got Godskin Duo first try in my second playthrough, but, like, I, <laughs> then I, just died, couldn't I get died on again. the last hit, and yeah. then I was there for, like, another hour before I finally caved to get the fucking sleep pots. Bro, I got sleep pots, and I, fl I fucked it up twice. So my first two attempts, I fucked it up with the sleep pots, and I was like, fuck this. So I just did it properly, and then the third time, I did get it without the sleep pots. I was like, don't <laughs> fuck about with it if you don't want to. But then it's like, you know, uh, the, the Beast, first try. Uh, whatever his name is, fucking Horror Lou, first oh, try. Horror Lou. Yeah, and then Final Boss took Hulk me a couple Hogan. of tries. Yeah, Hulk Hogan took me a couple... Uh, uh, the Final Boss took me a couple of tries. But it was like... I don't know if it was just because my game sense was better, playing a bit better, know these bosses a little bit better. But I didn't mm -hmm. find the the final rush nowhere near as bad as I... I beat it all in basically the span of a day. So I was like... Yeah. I didn't really find it that bad this time. Um... I don't know. My opinion of Elden Ring's gone better. I think I like it more. I, that second playthrough made it better. Mainly yeah. because it was a 30-hour playthrough. I did only what I wanted to do, and I knew what I wanted to do. So I feel like it was a better experience that way. I didn't have to sit there banging my head against the wall. I just wanted to do the fun fights, yeah. and I did the fun fights. Um, after after the second playthrough, I definitely do have more of an appreciation for the game. I used a totally different build from what I used on my first playthrough opting for more of like a holy knight paladin kind of build primarily pumping into faith so i also got to use some some new magics i never used before like the, all the faith magic stuff it's and it's like i also went out of my way to fight a lot of the optional bosses i didn't do i fought placidus i fought moog i fought <laughs> and beat melania <laughs> no good job so oh yeah like I don't know, like, it's it's weird, because, like, I don't really feel any better or worse as a as a capital G gamer for having done those fights. Like, oh, Placidus yeah. Axe was kind of a pushover. I was honestly kind of underwhelmed by no, it. That's a piss take. I think, I think, people, really overestimate, I think people overestimate me, Moog as well. I really think that, yeah. that fight's also overrated. I genuinely first tried that in both of my playthroughs and i was like i first shoot. tried it once i got the the little physic that protects you from bleed oh i wasn't even like, using oh. that i just remember the only thing that i had going for me was i'd seen someone fight moog before so i saw that he does the thing that he does don't want to ruin yeah. that for hunter but so i already knew that that was coming so i was like oh just prepare for the heals um yeah and tank through it but now i feel like I don't know. I feel like a lot of the culture of FromSoft games being hard is so superfluous because you can make these games as easy as you want them to be and you can make them yeah. as hard as you want them to be too. Where yeah. I feel like a lot of people put it as like a 
you know, it's an award. I beat Elden Ring. I beat Dark Souls. And then you have these stupid fuckers that have to have arguments with each other going, well, I beat it blindfolded. I beat it after <laughs> I chopped my fucking heart arm off, bro. Like, you, you're garbage. <laughs> so it's like when yeah, people are sitting here it going... It becomes really silly. It'd be yeah. like me telling Kyle that beating Devil May Cry 3 didn't count because he didn't get <laughs> S ranks on every mission. Basically. So true. And so when I and sit like, here, I'm like... You can also, like kind of adjust the difficulty for yourself because this playthrough i was using shields where in my first playthrough i was pretty much relying on dodging and yeah, like the, the difference is sword, fucking big night sword. and day big sword. no you don't need it you just need that circle button that's all you need big sword and circle button that's all you need i swear by it magic's for or two as swords well. and a circle yeah. button <laughs> hell yeah dude two yeah, hand but... that sword bro that's all you need that's all you need but sometimes just dropping the big great shield right in front of your face and tanking 95% of that damage feels pretty fucking good. No, and the sword counterattack is pretty rad, too. But that's what, like... I mean, I mean, the shield doesn't help with Melania. She heals even on block. So, you know, fuck me, what, I guess. Yeah, because <laughs> block only... Yeah, it only stops. It only... You still yeah. take damage. It only mitigates it. Yeah, it mitigates it. Yeah. But I feel like it all just kind of feels like pointless when there's these conversations and like there should be accessibility options. There's already stuff like beating Elden Ring isn't an achievement. If you want to make it easier, you can do. You can make. Yeah. You can overlevel yourself. You can use the physic. You can summon a. You can summon whatever you want. You can use the uh, the NPC summons as well. You can do whatever the fuck you want to make it as easy. As <laughs> you, you can want turn on be. multiplayer and summon to, other yeah. people to help you. You can have someone else. You don't even need to know who the hell they are. Let me yeah, have a fucking pause. Yeah, face that liked uh, fighting Melania for people. Let me solo. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, that guy. Or let me solo him now. I think because the final boss is a dude in the expansion, so now he's moved oh, on. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as far as like the uh, obviously I haven't got there yet, but as far as like the last third of the game being kind of a dip, I feel like, and I've only played Bloodborne as far as games. You know the other games that FromSoft has made, but I've played a couple of other games, you know, akin to it. Mm -hmm. and I feel like that just seems to be an issue with this genre in general. Is yeah, that they decide that the second half is less good. Yeah, like uh, it was a different kind of thing because it was a two D game and whatnot. But The Last Faith was very much inspired by these kind of games when I played it last year, and the second half of the game was. It's just when they started throwing all the annoying gimmicks like poison and stuff into the level <laughs> designs. Dude, I, I I swear by like 90% of video games, the second half is always worse than the first half. 90% of video games will be like that. Yeah. They might have a good ending, but like as well, in, like, in terms of gameplay. Like, in terms of in terms of gameplay and, and whatnot. Yeah. Always a dip. It's always in the second Running half. Running on fumes. Even my favorite games of all time. Have a dip in the second half. Persona 5. Oh, yeah. Dip in the second yeah. half. You know? Um, yeah. yeah, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. And yeah, even Bloodborne did that itself, I would say. Like, after, mm -hmm. you know, the ending bit, not as good as, like, Central Yarnum and Cathedral Ward. And yeah. Like, it, had, it had the cool castle you could go and find, but... Everything else surrounding the cool castle, as far as things that you had to play, weren't wasn't as good. Yeah, so you got to just the final couple of bosses and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> or Hunter, you just brought it up. DMC three has some of the worst bosses at the end of the video game. Ah, uh, the fight the with worst, Arkham. You got the worst one right before the best one. It's you the silliest thing in the world. You've got the classic Capcom boss rush level. Yeah, like. Even our favorite games fall off. Hell yeah. That's but, true. You know, I my appreciation for Elden Ring has grown with this new playthrough, personally. I think that... I think it's a good game. I Like, that is the thing. I still don't... I don't love it as much as everybody else loves it, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Because people are allowed to like things to different extents, ladies and gentlemen. That is a thing that is quite possible. <laughs> Imagine. That people can have yeah. different opinions, you know? But... Was that yeah? Was that too harsh on Elden Ring originally? Yeah, probably. But also, when everybody is saying this is the this is the best thing since sliced bread, and you have it, and you go, mm, actually, like you know, it brings a four out of five from instead of a five out of five into having an argument as if it's a one out of five. Like that's what it just does. Yeah. It just ends up being either you're on the hype train or you're not. 
And if you've got one foot in the door, it's like, nah, you have to pick a side, mate. No in between. Yeah, it's real annoying. I mean, I think it I also helps that now we're like two years removed from the mm. the initial hype, the initial recency bias that Elden Ring might have had on release. Where we can start to look at the game and be like, yeah, this is still an amazing game. It's probably from Soft's best work at this point. But also, uh, it has its problems. That. I ain't saying that. I ain't fucking saying that. Bloodborne, well, yeah, fucking I mean, greatest Armor... game, mate. Fuck it all. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Armored Core 6 came out last year. I, mean, that's, I like we all know that's Ring. where they really peaked. My opinion has really grown. If I, if you said to me, you can only play one of these again, Bloodborne or Elden Ring, I'm throwing my copy of Elden Ring straight in the fucking garbage. Bye bye. Don't care. <laughs> Never again. Don't care. I'd happily made that trade. Hundred percent. But yeah, I've yet to play all of Elden Ring, but so far, what I have played of Elden Ring, I still like Bloodborne a little more. Yeah. Mostly because it just speaks to me more. But I do think it is a crowning achievement for From, and that's why I will happily say. I think it's sure. a step. For sure. It, will they do this for the rest of their time? Will there be will will the next game be also open world? Or that I don't know. If I'm honest with you, I really don't know. I hope, especially after playing I hope, this I DLC. Think I don't think they will. They'll just stick to the same thing. Like I could see them getting back to an open world game sometime but yeah. i don't think it'll just be the only thing that they do from now on you i know? think they'll go i think that i think they'll go back to a like... more linearish kind of game next time when i say mm. linear i mean dark souls linear which still is not linear but <laughs> i think they'll go more back to that not because this hasn't been a success but i also think there's only so much there's, there's only so much magic in the in the way that it is in the same way yeah. that I would hope that the next 3D Zelda game even though it's not going to go back to classic Zelda 3D Zelda I hope that they have actual dungeons this time and a narrative that's a bit more in the forefront and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know make changes mm. do different things um yeah. but now Good job from this game's been in the fucking zeitgeist that long that you're making me come around to it so i uh, hope you're happy <laughs> yeah, good job. Uh, now for a game that will not be in the zeitgeist for long let's talk about concord um that came out yeah, this year in the zeitgeist for uh the release date forever yeah <laughs> uh. kyle we played concord we sure did ethan uh did you, guys you can play tell it together or did you just yeah we did play like, it together yeah it separately. we did I'll tell you this, if I played it on my own, I would have played one round and said, nah, this is shit, and then never touched it again. No, Kyle and I played about two hours of Concord last night yeah. as of recording this podcast. So um, we played with, um, <laughs> we played a match at one point with like Bruce Green and them lot from Funhouse. They were on the opposite team and we fucking oh, lost. Nice. And it was like, I said to <laughs> Kyle, I'm like, you know, it's bad because the last time I played against YouTubers was Crash Team Rumble. This is where we're getting to, uh, where, the, where the player base is so low that we get ended up going against oh, YouTubers. Oh, dude, if you had streamed happened. it, you would have had Firewalk guys in the chat. <laughs> mm, maybe. But, um... Yeah, Concord, the the game that was having a pre-order early access that was going so badly they opened it up to anybody with PS Plus. Um, yep. But no, we played about two hours of it. Um, Kyle, what did you think of Concord? Honestly, like, it works. <laughs> but honest, but like, this game is like the definition of fine. Like, Ethan and I were talking while we were playing it, and we were like, if we were to review it, it would probably get like a three on our review scale. And that's where I'm sitting on it as a three. That's where yeah. I'm going. It's competent. It's, it's like the most inoffensive video game I've played. I wouldn't yeah. It I wouldn't pay forty dollars for it. I really no. wouldn't pay forty dollars no. for it. Someone's I've seen a load of fucking copers on Twitter the past couple of days that are like this is the next Helldivers, guys. Trust me, it's really good. I'm like, nah, it doesn't have the juice. It There's just no doesn't shot. have no. the juice. It doesn't the have the character. The, yeah, yeah, the reason people like that so much is because of like the tone and the goofy charisma that that game has, not Diet Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> this game, it really just doesn't have any of that. Like, when, like first match I booted into, it, you know, it gives you your character select screen. And, you know, I come from fighting games. I run on the rule of you 
look at the Whoever character roster. The yeah, and you pick the character that looks the coolest to you. I scrolled through, and I'm like, all of these characters look bland as shit. Bro, they literally are like, it's like we've got Overwatch at home is how it feels, where it's like, yeah. we have a McCree. Sorry, it's we like... have a Cassidy. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, should not dead name. <laughs> stop dead naming Ethan. Need to stop dead naming Cassidy. But you know, we have a Cassidy. <laughs> we have a uh, Sombra. There's Sombra. literally Sombra. It's literally Sombra. Has the same SMG. Her ability is teleportation. I'm like, wow. Okay, we're going for that, are we? <laughs> um, you know, you have characters that very much feel like you've got you've got basically the soldier from TF2. And the demo from TF2. Like, they've just basically looked at hero shooters in the past and gone, yoinky, spoinky, I'll take that, <laughs> I shall take that. And what you come across, it just, it's so bland. I watched the cutscenes at the start, I'm like, I don't give a shit. I get to the mm. menus, they're bland as shit. The UI is quite possibly <laughs> the, UI the is so ugliest massive. UI that I have seen <laughs> for a first person shooter. Like, does the person that made the UI have glaucoma? Like, is that why it's so fucking big? Like, I'm not joking. The health bar takes up the bottom third of the screen. Why? Like, what Dude, the fuck? The, the thing that gets Most me, first though... person shooters don't even bother with health bars. They're yeah. just like, screen turn red when you about to die. Yeah. But the thing that really gets me about the HUD is that everything is so massive, and then the map in the top left corner is teeny tiny. The map's the size of an Oreo. Itty bit. Like, genuinely. Oh, the map really? is the size of an yeah. Oreo, and everything else is, like, <laughs> the size, like, genuinely, like, the health bar. Like, if we're counting my webcam, the health bar would be my arm, where it is now, the green of my hoodie. <laughs> the green of my hoodie is the health bar in Concord. That's, That's how insane. fucking big it is. Like, it's yeah. huge. How do you see anybody to shoot? <laughs> You don't. You just go, oh, that's a nice elf bar, though. No, no, yeah, mate, that was good. <laughs> but it's like, it's the presentation is fine. It just screams we were given a lot of money and not a lot of direction is what it feels yeah. like. And, you know, you play the game, get the gameplay, and you're like, man, this feels fine. Like, it, it just, it feels... <laughs> turn off the adaptive triggers like you do in every first person shooter on ps5 you turn the sensitivity <laughs> bit up because my god it was way too slow and then you get to a point where you're like yeah this feels fine like i heard that a lot of the team at firewalk are ex destiny devs and i'm like oh i can feel that it feels a bit destiny in the way that it moves not in the way that it plays but i like the way the character feels the weight of the character very much feels mm. like destiny and i'm like oh okay i can see it but also bungie are one of if not the best in the biz when it comes to shooting in first person shooters and no bungie this is like no it's like it feels <laughs> clunky like the guns feel very just kind of fine like there was like three characters i liked playing like i say i liked playing yeah. the cassidy knockoff i liked playing the sombra knockoff and the rocket launcher person's broken so it's quite funny to play <laughs> them too um hunter i shit you not her rockets lock on when yeah. you fire them it's like the a dumbest stinger missile that's <laughs> yeah it's the dumbest thing they could have done and it's hilarious <laughs> oh my is it heat seeking too might as well be there's 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 four game modes in the beta. We only played three. Um, we never found that mysterious fourth mode. Who knows what it is? I still don't to this day. But uh, <laughs> salmon run. T oh yeah, god, I win. So they have TDM basically. They had TDM. They had kill confirmed, and they had what is essentially control S point. like control S and D kind of thing. Where that that one's a one life around. The other ones are just you respawn after a certain time. Um, yeah. TDM and Kill Confirm feel like they're just they they feel like nothing. They just you run around and you shoot and you see what happens. You can pick whoever you want. There's no real repercussions for anything. Um, it just felt generic. Um, when we went to the more competitive playlist, I started to vibe with it a tiny bit more because I was like, oh, there's a reason for these abilities. There's a reason for these strats. You can kind of figure mm -hmm. out what is going on once you win around you're locked out of that character so you can't play them for the next for the rest of the game but other people can so if kyle gets a win with rocket launcher lady then i can be rocket launcher lady next round it just locks the person mm -hmm. out once you've got a win um which i was like oh 
tiny bit of tactics, that's pretty good until you find out this one little thing. Let me tell you this one little thing, Hunter. Come on close. Let me tell you. Buckle There's more rounds story. than there are good characters. No, but... <laughs> Potentially. Yeah, there is more rounds than there are good characters, but there's this little thing, right? So basically, when you level up, when you level up characters, when you level up people in general, you can get different abilities. So for example, uh, Knock Off Cassidy has one ability where when they roll, like when they do a dodge roll, they reload. Like Cassidy from Overwatch. That's literally something that Cassidy does. Wow, what an incredible idea that was. Then there's another one where it's like, oh, the longer you lock on, the more damage you do. It's a second ability. But instead of just having a toggle to choose this ability, it technically is like a second character that you can add to your roster. So you can just add two Cassidy's to your roster. And then when you win a round, Cassidy number one is now active with action. I can play Cassidy again. Oh. <laughs> I don't oh, know how many of these there are. That's like that. That sounds, that sounds like the variants in Mortal Kombat for like 10 and 11, where you'd have like Scorpion with fire moves and then scorpion but he uses swords yeah basically that's exactly what it is it, it, like you select those when you i don't know how many you yeah. choose like two of their move sets or i don't whatever. know it's, how many limits there stupid. are to these characters but in the creation where you create your roster of characters it has like a load of check boxes where you get certain bonuses if you meet criteria like you have four or more of the categories in the thing and it's like you have x amount of unique heroes one of them is that you don't have three or more of the same character which to me suggests that if you don't give a shit about that bonus you could literally fill your whole roster of 12 of 12 cassidy's and just have i'm gonna play this this round i'm gonna play like obviously if someone else picked cassidy you're fucked because you won't have the option to pick them that round <laughs> but there's nothing to stop you from having four of them and going well let's hope no one else is a cassidy i don't even remember what his name is but you know it's I don't know. Let's hope no one's a Cassidy main. Let's hope no one's a Sombra main. I'm just gonna have five of them and play them most rounds. So instantly out of the window. That strategy is out of the window instantly. Um, Mm. I mean, it's. I just. I. There is no world, and I. I, I'd say I'd love to be proven wrong, but I don't want to be proven wrong on this one. There's no world where this (laughs) is going to be successful. I just don't see it. This is genuinely going to flop pretty bad. I think not. Not when your competition is Valorant or Overwatch 2 or whatever that Marvel game is. They're all free to play. Yeah. Or even Apex Legends, or which Apex. is a little different. Yeah. But, you know, remember the personality part of the uh, team character thing. Yeah. You see, there's benefits to having a game be paid to play, even in this kind of genre, right? less hackers less cheaters because you actually have to buy an account instead of actually just making a new one once you're banned stuff like that there is stuff where i'm like i understand why you want it to be but 40 dollars is a joke like this should be like a 15 dollar game 20 dollar game if you really wanted people to pick it up but i don't see it happening i just really don't there's nothing here that's screaming to me man i want to play that again i don't i was having fun because i was playing a shooter with a friend one of the other ones that there's no reason to play this one instead no because really here's the isn't. thing if you're still playing overwatch then you're too far gone and you're brain dead and you're just gonna <laughs> keep playing it aren't you let's be real here um but also no one does personality and stuff like and character better than blizzard really so it's like mm-hmm. there you go they still add new overwatch heroes and even though i don't care about overwatch i'm like oh that character's unique and fits the theme and they've done a really good job of that and they're like 30 40 heroes deep now where it's like oh cool I like that. That's 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 pretty cool. Marvel Rivals, don't think anyone gives a shit, but it's free to play, so fair play. And Valorant's coming to consoles in the next month or so. I mean yeah. Marvel will attract the normies who accept mediocrity. Anyway, so And Valorant will too. I think there'll be a yeah. lot of people playing Valorant, especially because people don't like the um the anti cheat that Valorant does. People don't like it on PC because it's like kerneled and all that jazz. It goes into your computer, it has access to stuff internally people don't like that i think people are going to be a lot more willing to have it run on your playstation because people won't care um stuff like that so it's like even people that have been hesitant to play valorant on pc might go oh there's nothing on my xbox anyway look away (laughs) you know just keep playing so i just i just don't see a future for it i think it's fine i think it does the job um the team seems to be competent enough. Like, I wish they 
would I hope make they something get to that, do something yeah. else after this runs its yeah. course. Apparently in the code there's stuff for PvE that they've been working on with this mm. game as well. That might have been a better place to go in general, to be honest. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like different. I feel like games have been shifting to PvE in terms of multiplayer a lot more recently. You know, Hal Divings and all that. Um People yeah. like cooperative games a lot more, it seems, these days, rather than just, you know, Battle mm -hmm. Royale was the last trend. It looks like PvE is the current wave. So maybe, but I just I just don't see it. I really don't. And it sucks, because you don't, you don't want to just be like, oh, this is going to be a fucking flop straight away. It's like Crash Team Rumble. I liked Crash Team Rumble. <laughs> I also was happily to be like, yeah, this game's going to be dead on arrival. But I like it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's good. Yeah. I like it and Concord. I'm like, it's fine. Like if it was free to play, then I'm like, yeah, some people will probably play it, but yeah, meh. But it's... again, forty dollars is a super steep yeah. price of admission for something like this. Some no, people won't buy an expansion for the game of the year 2022 because it's forty dollars. There's there's yeah. no chance in hell that some people are gonna buy Concord for the, for the same price. Like just yeah, there's a no. lot of other games you could pick up instead. Is the main issue especially because yeah. it's out next month and next month is like yeah it's the calm before the storm but you know end of august games start coming out again and it's like oh oopsie i guess like it's just i just don't see a future for this game i don't and i yeah feel bad for the devs and i hope they get to make something else but also we know what the games industry is like around this time for the past couple right. of years is it's been tragic yeah. and studios have shuttered for a lot less. Um, <laughs> Whether they succeed after or they not. did a lot more, yeah. yeah, than what Concord is doing. Say, you know, say what you want about Xbox, but it's like you know, PlayStation has also shuttered studios before for a lot less. Yeah, Long, they've do, they've done it recently with um, London, so it's like yeah, mm -hmm. Japan Studio, Japan Studio, they, it happens. I'm. I, the happens a lot in the interesting guys. i'm still terrified mm. for ninja theory especially with those sales results for hellblade <laughs> i am fucking terrified i love how everyone's sitting there coping on the internet going oh but their next project is greenlit i'm like having a greenlit project doesn't stop you from being shuttered that that's not a yeah, thing if they want you yeah. gone they'll take you they'll 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 let you go it's not a I'll just move the project to someone else yeah but um can't say I didn't see it coming, but no, I don't think it's going to be the second coming. I do not think that Concord is going to be all that it's cracked. Yeah. Right. God knows. Nah. Like we said it a couple of weeks ago, Sony's got to be sitting there going, man, four years ago when we greenlit Astrobot and Concord, who saw this coming? Like, did you think there was anybody that was like, oh yeah? That Ashwell game's gonna do numbers. That people like you know all those suits were like, mm. oh, Concord's gonna be huge. It's gonna be big. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do that Astrobot game. It's cheap. Who gives a shit? And it looks like it'll be the other way, <laughs> which yeah. sucks. But it's like that's why don't let executives make these decisions. Um, yeah, we do not need. I mean, here's the thing, like, like Concord four or five years ago, it might have stood a chance, but now, like, we're just. I feel like we as a collective are just so even, kind of burnt. Even four or five years ago, I feel like there was too much competition in the space for I feel like, like a decade ago, breakaway. maybe yeah. it would have got out before Overwatch. I think after Overwatch... It, yeah, if it, come, if it came out the same time as Overwatch, it might have fared better than like... Although Thingy Lord Battleborn Lord came out the same time yeah, as Battleborn? Overwatch. It did terrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah what the hell's yeah. Battleborn? <laughs> Look it up. It's basically yeah, Gearbox did a Overwatch that came out at the exact same time as Overwatch, and Overwatch just I went. I feel like Lol, there was another goodbye. one too. Well, that's that just I can't unfortunate. Think about the what was it? Yeah, but you know, is this lady throwing magic swords? Wait, this uh, game looks cool. Well, it's dead. guys, how did this game fail? Probably because it wasn't as cool as it looked. No, yeah, well, probably. And also, Overwatch came out like a week aren't. later or whatever. And everyone was like, oh yeah, I'll take the Blizzard game, please. Because that was back when Blizzard had a good reputation. Yeah. And also, this dude at the front of Battleborn looks like... <laughs> he looks like Vlad Plasmus from Danny Phantom. Oh, sick. He was born to battle. But with big swords. But, um... 
Is that a yeah. robot with a monocle and a top hat? Just <laughs> looking. Hang just on, looking I think I just found the hunter character. <laughs> <laughs> just having a quick look here as well. Uh, it looks like um, oh. on Steam, only a thousand people have played the Concord beta. That's the top player number. <laughs> like a, a thousand concurrents. That's very bad. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Because that is pre-orders only. And if only a thousand people have pre-ordered like, at the same time, have, have booted oh, up yeah, the base. Steam has no way to get the, uh, the game PS free. Plus business. Yeah. But no. Oh, well. Yeah. This, what could I... possibly go wrong? <laughs> Hopefully Fair Game Dollar Signs doesn't happen the same way. Let's hope... To be fair to that one, I think it stands a better chance just because, like, what? People aren't happy with Payday 3 right now, are they? they I think that game has a better chance. I'm also yeah. hoping, for the love of God, because, you know, there was the game that was the Deviation game, but then Deviation shuttered and Sony nicked half the staff right. like a Thanos snap. Um, yeah. That was the team that was being led by the guys that made COD Zombies. So I'm like, you'd hope to God that that's a PVE game at worst. Like, like that, yeah. like my God, I'm hoping that they're not going to go, hey guys, we're going to take on Call of Duty with a first person shooter. I'm like, no, 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 we can't do this again. No. <laughs> but I think, I really hope Sony does take a lesson to this. We do not need this many games as a service. We really don't. Yeah. I saw someone tweeting, like, yeah. last cancelling Last of Us Factions was a mistake. And I'm like, it would have been popular, I but was. also I don't think it was a mistake, because, my god, there's still so many more unannounced ones that are still it's just planned too, as well. The market's too oversaturated. Still planned, and probably won't actually come out. Yeah, ex yeah. the x art game, the... Fair game dollar sign. You've got the yeah. Horizon co-op game that was that's been rumored for a while. Um, yeah. Sucker Punch has been working on a game that's multiplayer for a while, which we assume is just more Ghost of Tsushima factions or whatever it was called. You know, the, the Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Legends that was it. Legends. Yeah. You see, that's the problem with the uh, <laughs> making a game out of your silly multiplayer mode that uh, you had for your single player game. Is I feel like the people who liked the multiplayer mode. There weren't that many of them. They were just loud. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It was like, congratulations, 24 of you played Last of Us Factions. And you really like it. <laughs> Good I don't for you, think champ. That I don't think that the other game would have come out and be a, you know, a smash hit off Did... of, at least okay. sustainably. Can, it might have got a good boost. You can be as positive as you want. You can be as positive as you want. It doesn't change the fact that it's a failure. Like Crash Team Rumble. Yeah. I liked yeah. Crash Team Rumble. Canadian guy A liked Crash Team Rumble. Well done. That's two fucking people. Whereas <laughs> with, like, you need more than two people to play a, to play a multiplayer game. To play an eight-player game. Yeah. They just do. And even as someone who liked Crash Team Rumble, after two weeks of the game being out, I did not touch it ever again. Like, I, like it's just... Mm -hmm. You know? I, I think we are in an era... Where games as a service is gonna die, and I'm happy with that. I really am. I'm just scared Except of what comes like impossible next. to go away. Like yeah, Fortnite like Fortnite. But, yeah, but I think they're yeah. just gonna carry on in their own little bubbles. And it's like Fortnite is still the biggest game in the world. Yet I never yeah. hear about it, and I'm perfectly fine with that. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas like three years ago, four years ago, people I'd be hearing so much about, about Fortnite, even though I wouldn't be playing it. Right? I'm like. I'm yeah. Perfectly fine. You're like, oh, this character is coming. Cool. Stop telling me about it. I'm sick of hearing about this. Mm -hmm. But like Fortnite got to the point of popularity where like my sister and her roommate who are not video game players by any means, even they were getting into it. It's oh, like. Dear. Can't seem to hit that same zeitgeist anymore. I think I think the bubble has finally burst on this. Or everyone's just happy in their own little bubble. And I think that's fine. Mm. Uh, but hey, let's wrap yeah. it up there. We're all good. We're done. What did you think of Concord? <laughs> kind of Let a dour note to end this episode on. But uh, the know. games industry is in shambles. I feel like that is the ongoing theme of the of season five of the Hey Show podcast is the games the industry, game industry is, in is in shambles. But go play FF14. Yeah. 
Final Fantasy's having a good that year. Everybody free. else, not mu not so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is funny how it was like. Yeah, we started off on such a light-hearted episode, and then four episodes in, it's like studio's dead. Fucking everyone's dying. <laughs> world on fire. Wrap it up. Yeah. It's all. It's like that bit from SpongeBob in his brain where everything's on fire. What's his name? We threw out his name. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for us. We're done. Links are on screen right now. Next week. Who knows? I don't. Maybe we'll talk about think, some other stuff. I think it's your pick for a topic. Well, I'm so. not even. I'm not even in the country for most of this week, so uh, good luck with that one. <laughs> wow. Well, sounds like you got a job to do on your yeah, vacation. Yeah, it's called be away Mr. Man, and not man. think about this. So. Uh, Unlucky, guess we're talking about nothing next week. It's going to be a good one. Pog. Silence, the podcast. <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> the, the ambient noise podcast. Yeah. Well, I was at the lo lo fi noises. To yeah. study, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to apologize, by the way. If you heard, like, l you guys must have heard it because of Discord. Um, noise compression but i'm like if there was little like weird wheezing noises in the background that was my cat snoring very loud earlier so if you're wondering about half an hour ago <laughs> what that was blame my cat it wasn't me it was very funny though i hope it was picked up if it wasn't oh well <laughs> just now she was snoring and it was quite loud um but yeah that's it thanks for everybody there I can, my, my voice is gone again. Perfect. You know, oh, first two minutes, last two minutes. We're all good. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody for listening and watching this week. We'll be back next week with God knows what. Uh, but hey, it'll be fun. Whatever happens. Uh, but yeah, until then, have an awesome week. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.